Today we're going to be talking about drill sharpening. Let me wipe it down. So you want to know about drills. Well, here's a production tool catalog. And the first 115 pages or so do nothing but deal with the different types of drills that there are. And believe me, the amount of drills that are in here, the types of drills are enormous. The standard drill that we use typically, and I'm sure that you would be using, is called a jobber drill. That's what this is right here. If you go through the catalog, you'll find that there are different shapes of drills, different types of drills as far as material. There's carbon drills, high speed with cobalt. There's TIN coated drills, tip coated, uh, the whole drills coated. Then you can get into different types of spiral drills and you can get into screw machine drills which are short and then there's different, uh, there's left hand drills believe it or not. You can get a left hand drill and there's metric drills of course and uh, then it goes into, there's taper drills. So there's drills with smaller shafts because it has to, maybe you're going to put it in a hand drill and you can only have a three inch diameter maximum, but you want to have a three quarter inch drill. So it's a, uh, it just happens to be a drill with a, sh with a shank on it that's turned down. Then there's long drills. My gosh, there's drills that are, that are 18 inches long, 20 inches long. Then there's taper shank drills like this where there's a taper on a shank. So the types of drills that are out there are incredible and we haven't even touched the surface. There's also, by the way, there's hollow drills that have coolant through the point. We're not even going to get into that either, but that's another type of drill. So let's take a look at a standard drill here. Here we have a drill that needs to be sharpened, which we're going to take in the back there and we're going to do that at some point. But I want to give you an idea about the sizes of the drills because when you're sharpening a drill, how do you sharpen a drill like this guy? I mean, this is 40 thousandths. The only way you're going to do that is with some kind of a magnifier like this. Because unless your eyes are really super good, which mine aren't that good, you can't see what you're doing. So as small as that is, that creates a bigger challenge than I think something like this, which is easier to see. So looking at this set of drills, which I happen to like, it's a number drill from 60 all the way up. And then there's the fractional drills and which is over here and then there's the alpha drills which are here. All those drills are necessary depending what you're doing with them, depending on the type of hole you're going to tap or prepare a hole for. That's why there's three different sets and three different sizes. How do we sharpen a drill? Well, let's take a good look at this. There's two types of angles, 135 and 118. 118 is a standard size which is what the jobber drills are generally uh, ground at. And why do we want a 118 over 135? 135 is as a rule is for harder materials like titanium, stainless, really tough stuff. The engineers don't ask me why, but they figured out that 135 is a better angle than 118 for tough materials. Can't answer why. But let's talk about the geometry of the drill for a moment. You'll notice here, and this is really critical, this is called the web thickness or the flat across the drill. Why is that important? Because that flat does not drill a thing. What that flat does is it pushes the metal around to where it gets hot and then it starts to melt and of course the drill gets hot, your material gets hot. But that's why the flat needs to be at a minimum. The angle of the drill itself right here is what we've already talked about and that's important that we produce the proper angle that we want. As I mentioned in our case it's going to be 118 degrees. These the helix angle in here is important because most of them are standard. There are different helix angle drills, but the angle that we have here will depend on the type of relief that we put on the back side of the drill. So that's important as well. And once we get our geometry right and we make sure that we get our point on center, not to one side or another, we'll have a good sharp drill. Remember if we put the drill point to one side, if we get it off center, we've got a problem with that because it's going to cause the drill to wobble and it'll cause the drill to drill oversize, which we don't want. How do we get rid of that? If we're, if we're drilling a, say, a quarter inch hole, we don't have to worry about it too much. Once we get it on center, that, uh, that 
chiseled edge or that flat edge there rather uh, is going to be uh, insignificant. When you get into larger drills like this, then it's important that you run a pilot drill through there first. Say in the case the size of this drill, which is about one inch, I would say I would go through there with about a quarter inch drill or maybe even a three eighths drill first. Then you're going to get a cleaner and a better hole. So now that we've covered the geometry of the drill itself, we're going to show you a drill here that was burnt up. And in sharpening this drill, I believe that it would be wise to come back here and probably take a quarter of an inch off this drill. Why? Because I believe that the flute here is pretty well melted in its undersize, and we won't get a good hole next when we try to sharpen it and try to use it. So we're going to go ahead and remove about a quarter of inch of this drill and then put a point on it. So we'll take you out back. We're going to show you how we're going to do it. Wow, this is what it looks like under a magnifying uh, camera, which magnifies it about 50 times. So you can see it's pretty well trashed. So we're going to take off about a quarter of an inch of the drill. The reason we're going to do that is the flutes on the side seem to be uh, worn and uh, we're not going to get the right size if we don't do that. So it, this thing looks pretty ugly, I guess. I'm not sure who did it or why, but it's a great example of a drill that's gone south and now we're going to sharpen it. All right, so here we've taken our dresser and we've cleaned up the, uh, the grinding wheel, make sure that we have a good sharp wheel. And as you can see, we're removing the stock. I know this drill looked like it was trashed, like it should have been thrown out, but uh, it, it can be saved. It's not a big deal. We just have to remove, like I said, about a quarter of an inch of the drill. And then we can begin to put our point on. And notice I'm traveling across the wheel uh, all the way from right to left. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I don't want to wear a hole in the wheel. I want to make sure that the wheel stays pretty sharp. Now here we're going to take our protractor, set the angle that we need, and uh, draw a line. Like so. Now why did I put the line there? It's really to guide my hand. All I want to be able to do is I can I can line up the drill itself with a line that I put on the on the steady rest. And we're going to start here as you can see just to begin to put the point on at a 59 degree angle. And again, I like to go back and forth. I don't like to put a hole in the wheel, which is easy to do. And I know it looks like my angle is not correct. When I say the angle, I mean the compound angle, that is up and down, not right to left. Right to left, I'm good with. But it's the camera angle that makes it look that way. They're, they're really, uh, we really are putting the relief on the back side to some extent. So we're gonna continue to do this until I feel that I've got it even on both sides. And then we'll check the angle with the protractor to see how it looks. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's, uh, this is a rather aggressive wheel. And here we're checking the angle and it looks to me like it's pretty darn good. So now we're gonna put a little relief in it and you'll notice how I roll it up just a bit. That puts a relief on the backside on the heel of the, of the drill point so it's not rubbing. Remember, we want the point to do the cutting. If the heel is rubbing, and the point's not touching while we're going to generate heat, and we're not going to get a good hole. So we want to make sure that we put enough relief in there. And I, I'm feeling pretty good about the relief that I, that I have put in there. Check the angle. The angle looks good. Now here we're going to go in. Now, by the way, this is the camera tricking, uh, tricking us. This wheel is going at about uh, 1,500 RPM. It just doesn't look like it, so don't pay any attention to that. Now we're putting in, we're just relieving the flat point of the drill just a little bit. So remember, the flat point of the drill does a lot of pushing and doesn't really do any grinding, or uh, not grinding, doesn't really do any drilling. So we want to make sure that we put that to a minimum. And you can see here that we put a little relief in the backside that relieves the flat. And remember, this is magnified about 50 times. So what you're seeing is not really as coarse as it looks. And there again is our relief on the backside. And I felt pretty good about that. I think that the drill looked pretty good. And we're going to go out back at some point and give it a try. 
But there you see the before and the after, again with the relief on the back edge. So that's all there is to sharpening a drill. As we wrap things up, we want to take a second to thank you, the viewers, for all of your support. You are the reason that we make these videos, and we appreciate all of the support that you give us. If there's anything you want to see us do, leave a suggestion in the comments below. We'd be happy to take your suggestions. Once again, thanks for watching.